Hi, there's a number of strategies that can help you improve your ACT scores. This is my strategy number one, using the answers. So the biggest difference between an AC test and a regular test is that the ACT has answer choices. So this video is going to take a look at how we can best use those answer choices and strategies we can use to, um, to utilize those answer choices in coming up with the best answer. So let's take a look. So I've got six different ACT practice problems that are going to help demonstrate the use of using the answers to solve the problems. So let's take a look at the first one and always take a look at the answer. So we've got um, zero shows up twice, two shows up twice, uh, and negative two shows up twice. So if we pick one of those, we're either going to eliminate two answers and only have three left, or we're going to narrow it down to two answers. Zero is usually an easy one to plug in, right? So zero squared is zero plus two times zero is eight. So zero does not work zero does not work so that takes B and D out the zero does not work so now let's try another one let's try two so X squared plus 2x equals 8 let's try it for two two squared is 4 2 times 2 is 4 and again we're trying this for 2 equals 8 so that's true so yes 2 works so 2 works we already eliminated this one, even though two works, we eliminated it because zero doesn't work. And none of the other ones have two in it. So um, let's just double check and make sure that uh, negative four gives us an answer. So um, negative four squared plus two times negative four, does that equal eight? Negative four squared is 16 minus eight equals eight and check so negative four that we were checking also works so we just double check that and make sure we get it and a is our answer here okay so number two you'll notice in the answers what we have one and three both positive and negative so we really just have to check one plus or minus and three plus or minus so we're going to check for the absolute value of x squared plus 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 does that equal 0 so let's check for 1 absolute value of 1 squared is 1 2 times 1 is 2 minus 3 and that does equal 0 so 1 works minus 1 now if you notice the only place they have x is in the absolute value so if you did notice that you'd know that you're going to get the same value for negative one but if you didn't notice that we can just put negative one in and, go, and run through it as well so negative one the absolute value of that is one one squared is one the absolute value of negative one is one times two gets us two minus three is zero so both negative one one and negative one both are working so now let's check three so 3 squared is going to be 9. 2 times the absolute value of 3, or 3, is going to be 6 minus 3. And that does not equal 0. So 3 does not work. Now you could stop there and figure out the answer. If you're on a roll and you want to just do the last one, just to do negative 3, that's fine too. Um, absolute value of negative 3 is going to be 3 squared is 9. 2 times the absolute value of 3, which is the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So 3 and negative 3 don't work, which eliminates all of these. And that gets us F as our answer, just plus and minus 1. All right, so on this answer, when we look at this, if we do, um, if we try 3, might be a good thing to try because it's in these two so we're either going to get these two or these three when we see if three works so 2x squared plus 6x equals 36 so let's try it for three two times three squared plus six times three does that equal 36 two times nine 
plus 6 times 3. And we get 18 plus 18 equals 36, and it does. So 3 works. So we're either looking at choice F or choice G, because 3 works. So now we just have to check one of these. Probably easier to check the negative 6. So now let's check negative 6. So for negative 6, we're going to get 2 times negative 6 squared plus 6 times negative 6. And does that equal 36? So negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36 times 2 is 72 minus 36. And that one works. So negative 6 works. So negative 6 works. So that takes this out and makes it this one. All right, so the answers that are going to work are going to be 3 and negative 6. And um, we tried the other place where 3 showed up. And um, we could go back and try this. But since it's going to be one or the other, and we saw that negative 6 worked, then we know that g is going to be the answer. OK, this one's a little trickier. You're not plugging directly the answer directly in. But it's saying 8% of 60 is 1 fifth of what number? So let's figure out what this is. First of all, 8% of 60 is going to be 0.08 times 60, or 4.8. So we're trying to see which one of these things we can multiply by 1 fifth to get 4.8. Now, one thing when you plug it in answers, you'll notice Unless the answer is something about which one is the largest, you'll notice that the answers typically go in order. So they get bigger as you go around. So a good strategy is to start in the middle, because then you can go, oh, I need a number that's smaller, I'll go this way. If I need a number that's bigger, I'll go this way. All right, so let's do 24 times 1 fifth is 24 divided by 5 which is 4.8, and we got lucky on the first try, and so sees our answer. But we don't want to have to try at most three, because if that, was, um, if that was too big, then we would go try 12. If it was too small, then we would try this. Um, and then we could just uh, pick one of the answers in that direction. All right, so that's how we get the answer for this, for C. OK, so here. Um, we want profits of at least 60,000. Um, and here's our profit equation. So again, we're just going to plug these in um, and see which one works. So we were to plug in 100, um, 500 times 100 minus 100 squared. It's going to get us 40,000. And that doesn't work. Now, I know I didn't take my advice and go to the middle one because I just wanted to show you a try in one. So let's so let's jump to the middle one. Uh, let's try 200 now. So 500 times 200 minus 200 squared. 100,000 minus 40,000. And that gets us 60,000. All right, so um, our answer is going to be H. Now, it's a little tricky the way it's worded. The fewest number of paintings um, that make a profit of at least, we're just trying to find out where it's equal. Um, that's going to be the fewest numbers that make it. Um, the thing is, 300 will make us at least 60,000. It's just going to make us a lot more than 60,000. So we're really just trying to find the one that equals 60,000, because that's going to be the lowest number that gets us at least that amount. So H is our answer here. Okay, now this one is a li little bit different. Um, we've got some data points here, and we're trying to find what the equation is. So you might be able to just figure it out and go, okay, what's the slope? What's the y-intercept? And do it that way. But if you didn't know how to do it, um, so it's a little bit different. We're taking these data points and putting them into the answer rather than putting the answer in. But I wanted to show you one thing. When we do something like that, um, first of all, 0 and 1 are very easy to do. So if we put in 0 to the first one, d equals 0 plus 14, and we get 14. If we were to stop there, 
um, we would get the answer wrong. You can't take, when you're taking data and plugging it into the answer like this, you can't take the first one that works. And let me show you why. So 0, 14 does not work with this one. 0 times 6 is 0 plus 14. It does work with this one. Does not work with this and does not work with this. So when we put this first data point in, we got either A or C that works. So then what we have to do to decide between A and C, we just have to pick another point. So we just have to take 120, 1 plus 14 is not 20, so that's going to eliminate A. And you can double check, it's the only one left, but you can double check, 6 times 1 is 6 plus 14, that does equal 20, so C is going to be our answer. If you had taken one of these, it might have only worked on, on one of them, uh, so you might be able to put it in and um, just get it right in the first try. But the point is, if you get more than one that works, first of all, you can't stop on the first one that you get that's right, because there may be multiple ones that work for that data point. And when you do get multiple ones, just pick another piece of data, put it in, and that should eliminate one and keep one. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.